Welcome to Frankie D Crafter. This week we'll be crafting a werewolf tree from Game of Thrones. Alright guys, so this is a little bit different. It's a long video and I didn't want to split it into two parts. So if you want to learn how to make the face, just skip to this time. If you want to learn how to make the flock for this, skip to this time. If you want to watch the whole thing, go ahead. I'm cool with that. Prepare yourselves for the craft. Winter is coming. And hopefully you don't get angry at me for the ending. Let's go. It's funny how things work out. When I first started the channel, I thought to myself, the one thing I won't do here is wire trees. I don't like working with wire. And when I started this project, I thought to myself, hmm, what a better way to start this project but to start it with a wire structure. I'm five minutes into this, I'm like, no, 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 no. But I pushed through it, and it wasn't as bad as I thought it was gonna be. Now the funny thing you might think is like, okay Frankie, you were inspired by Game of Thrones to do this. Wrong. I was actually inspired by one of my friends online. I follow him on Twitter, he's got an Instagram, he's really good. Spider Dog Crafting. Man, I've seen some stuff from him lately. He made a church, right? 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 But right? the trees right? outside of the church? Oh man, do they look good. And I was thinking to myself, those are missing some faces. And I got to it. And I just decided, why not make them wear wood trees, right? Right. And since right, in my right, campaign, right. most of the trees in my world have faces because of some lore stuff I haven't talked about, fits perfectly. I'll just have this one be a different type, stronger, whatever. You know what I'm saying. Alright, so I've distracted you long enough for you to notice that I'm very, very far along in the project now. I'm down to the branches and I started adding aluminum. Yes, no more wire. There are times where I put hot glue on the wire and then cover it with aluminum. Now back to spider dog crafting. Bro, keep up the good work. That Some of the stuff you're making is amazing. If you guys don't know, check them out. Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook I guess too. I've seen some stuff on like the crafter skill that he's done, that he's put up. Mm, check it out. Thanks for the inspiration. Now, after you're done thanking the community for what a great job they've been doing at inspiring you, you want to start covering the whole tree in hot glue. Yeah, boy. And also, we're going to try to get a base ready for this thing. As you can tell, this knife has no sharpness in it. Perfect. This is going to make it look a lot messier and totally intended. I, I planned that, of course. You know me. I'm just using a pink foam scrap I had laying around, just cutting it to the right size. And obviously you want to make all the sides look as messy as possible, as rough as possible, as rocky as possible. Adrian. Right here I basically melt a hole in the styrofoam and just kind of throw my guy in there. Bloop. Add a little bit of hot glue and yeah, I don't know why I did it like this but it worked. So I have a lot of caulk laying around, right? Right. right Figuring out right, ways to use right. it. Figured this was one of the ways that it might work out. Um, I actually start putting it on the branches as you can tell here and eventually I'm gonna sort of just rub it all around the branches give it some texture is the plan it actually did work out very well the idea here is to pinch the branches and the texture will kind of form itself and i actually did like this better than the than the texture that um the hot glue gives it so i was very happy with the results here i will do this on other projects for sure I know this might be a little bit late for some of you, but this is going to be a long video, so I'm apologizing ahead of time. As you can tell, I did add some caulk to the base. I end up adding more, but 
I found out something very cool about the clay that I'm using. It's actually pretty flexible when it dries. Uh, that's really cool because it means it'll crack less, I think. Well, it hasn't cracked. So, I, I'm very happy. When I found that out, I was like, I need to put more meat on this tree. And it's going to be that clay because if that clay is flexible, that means I don't have to worry about it cracking the way other clays do. We'll see how it works out. I'm recording this, I want to say, a month after I did this project. And this thing still looks new. And I'm still very happy with how it came out. So, I think project successful. You want to be very strategic when you start adding the clay. You don't want to add it all the way up to every single branch. You want to kind of just get it on the main trunk. Right? 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 Just right. make sure right. that your tree is not that flimsy. And like I said, this is a month after. I've dropped this thing twice already. The weakest part of it is, no surprise, the flocking. I suck at flocking. But everything else is perfect. We're gonna take one of these silly brushes, not the metal ones, the plastic ones, and we're gonna add some texture to the tree. We're doing this in layers, so I'm gonna put more clay on top of this eventually, and we're gonna add texture to it again eventually. I just don't wanna lose anything here. I feel like if I don't add the texture now and then start layering other pieces of clay, I'm actually gonna miss out on certain spots where I can't get my brush in. That's why I do it in between the layers as well. And since I know I'm not gonna be adding any extra layers to the back, I start kinda drawing the wood, the tree design on it. This is more of a cartoony take on it, but honestly at the very end of it, it's unnoticeable how cartoony it is. It actually looks pretty realistic. Now describing to the audience how to make a face is a little bit challenging. I start off by dividing the face into different sections. So the first thing I wanna do is define the eye sockets. The second thing I want to do is define the nose, make the indentation where the eyes are. Make sure to keep everything nice and smooth so if you're moving clay around, smooth it up again. This is where I start defining bone structures in the face. And as you can notice, I'm taking advantage of the shape of my tools to make sure I get the best shape or the shape closest to what I want it to be. Now one of the biggest challenges that I found while working on a small piece like this is actually working on it and making sure you don't lose any of the details you've already put on the piece. I make these lines right here uh, simply because it makes it easier for me when I'm painting it to make it look like it's actually crying. And for the mouth, I do almost like a skeleton teeth kind of thing, but it really is more like the, the bark of the top part coming together with the bark on the bottom part that make the mouth. That's why I went with that look. I do this scar right here, but honestly, at the end, you don't even notice it. I could have defined it better, but I didn't. That's on me. Um, honestly, I think the hardest part of this project was making the face. Maybe not so much for me, but uh, depending on what kind of style, if you're used to working with very, very small things, this might not be an issue for you. And you see me using tacky glue to glue it. I wait a bit till it's hard enough for me to start working around it. And I start adding more and more clay. This is to give the tree a bit more definition and to also to make the face look like it's part of the piece and not just glued onto it. You don't want to put too much attention to a single thing in your project and then make it look like it's just a sticker on top of your sculpture. I've seen it done a lot, I've done it a lot, and I feel like that's something as a crafter, you, you learn to spot those and say, you know what, this kind of doesn't belong here, let me make it belong here. I know I blended most of this already, but at the same time, I do want to emphasize it, so I go back and basically draw some details. And to make the face look more part of the piece, I am gonna take some clay and run it from the face to the tree. When I add these small pieces that I know I won't be able to blend into a big part of the project, I make sure to use tacky glue, just to make sure these pieces don't fall off. I start brushing this new layer to make sure that these pieces get textured as well. 
I also go back and define the deeper cuts, the ones that I want to be darker, the things that I want to stand out. When I set this on a table, I want this to be on a snow cover place, right? 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 I'm gonna right. try my best to make it look like snow with the caulk. Who knows? I've never tried this before and I think it turned out alright, but there's probably better ways to do it out there. When I mix this, I make sure to try to make it as smooth as possible on the surface. And then I try to bring some of that uh, caulk onto some areas on the rock sides. I do a black Mod Podge primer paint first and then I spray painted white primer. Make sure to test it away from the foam first on a smaller piece if you like or on a corner just to make sure that your uh, spray paint doesn't eat through your foam. Then I start doing my base coats. I do brown for the ground, a lighter brown for the tree, and then I do a watery blue for the base for the snow, but thinking back at it, I should have used a gray that's more on the blue side instead, because I end up covering a lot of this color anyways, and I completely fail on the effect that I was trying to go for. Right here I add my brown wash on the tree to highlight some of the details before I dry brush my lightest color. I go ahead and use that same wash on the side of the ground. Now the reason why I used the wash before is because these trees are very pale, they're very white. And I wanted that final coat of white to be very clean. Alright, and now, on to the flocking. Welcome to making flock with Frankie D. Fancy. The first thing you will want to get is this white sponge and you can easily obtain these at the dollar store or a Spanish store for that matter. Get yourself a small blender and then break the sponge into pieces and put it into that blender. Make sure you do not use this blender for any other thing but for crafting. This is my crafter blender, not my food blender. Don't be ridiculous. Once you get your flock to the preferred texture and grain, rinse as much water as possible out of it. For this next part, make sure to use gloves. <laughs> we are not barbarians. I do double check to make sure that all the pieces are small as possible. And after that, <laughs> Well, just to wait and see. You want to add your goriest red and then allow the sponge to absorb the color. I realized I will never use this paint. This red paint. They are meant for painting other things, so I use it for this. I had that red paint for about 10 years when I was a young lad, and as you could tell, it was still full. Hmm, that color, there's just something so unique about it. Time for my favorite part, the flocking. When you flock, make sure to add tacky glue to all the branches that you plan to flock. You are welcome to use the special tools for those hard to reach places. And of course, start adding your flock. Be smart and be fancy about it. The reason why you want to use the tacky glue versus any other glue is because tacky glue is very sticky before it dries, and it dries very well. All right, Frankie D. Fancy, I think I can take it from here. But what do you mean? Aren't you still supposed to be in jail? Um, well, I guess I'll let you finish this and uh, I'll be back for the outro. And let that be a lesson to you. Never interrupt Frankie D. Fancy, the original D-crafter. 
Whoa, 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 whoa. You're taking it too far here. You know that's not true. But the police. Uh, could somebody call the police? Hmm. You win this time, D-Fancy. <laughs> that's what I thought. I will just add some finishing touches here and add flog wherever some of my branches seem naked. And don't worry if some of your flog falls off the piece. It's bound to happen. Just glue it back up there. Afterwards, you're gonna spray it with some half water and half PVA glue that will make this as hard as a rock. Once the flock has dried as hard as a rock, you do want to dry brush a bit of white on that to add a little bit of contrast. Thank you very much again for watching another episode of Frankie D Crafter. Don't forget to subscribe. Go watch another one of my videos. Catch you on the flippity side. I'm gonna craft it, gonna craft it, gonna craft it, gonna craft Frank it. Frankie's gonna craft some stuff. Gonna craft it, gonna craft it, gonna craft it, gonna craft Frank it. Frankie's gonna craft some stuff. Gonna craft it, gonna craft it, gonna craft it, gonna craft it. Frankie's gonna craft some stuff. Gonna craft it, gonna craft it, gonna craft it, gonna craft it. Frankie's gonna craft some stuff.